Cinema Classics is sponsored by the Gateway Film Center and is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows online at WCBE.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics and entering the ranks now of the great filmmakers. Nose to nose with Martin Scorsese? Yeah. Are you kidding? This is good stuff. Just don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> this guy's only made five movies. <laughs> oh. Bong Joon-ho. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of the Bong Hive? Do you know what this yeah, is? Yeah, this is a bunch of people who are hot on him. Yeah, just his fans. Yeah. Hashtag well, Bong Hive. Look at, look at, as a, a relatively young man, he won Best Writer, Best Director, and Best Film, Parasite, Yeah. at the last Oscars. Come on. Yeah. That's quite an achievement. Yeah. Do you think it deserved it? Absolutely. As you remember, I made a fool of myself on television by saying that 1917 was going to win. Yeah. But I did say, I thought Parasite was a better movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is a better movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's always exciting when a movie, one, a foreign movie, this is, you know, this movie made history in all of the 92 years of the Academy Awards. Never yep. has a foreign language film taken that top yep. uh, best picture honor. But it's always exciting when a movie like this, it's, it's not a, a feel-good movie. It's kind of a dark comedy, but it's got some social satire going on, some commentary. Yep. And so introducing, uh, like, you know, a, a new kind of film to audience is always cool. And I think he is so, uh, so contemporary. And we, you and I talked about it before he became a big deal, because we loved Snowpiercer. Yeah, Snowpiercer was exciting. A terrific science fiction film, mm -hmm. beautifully photographed. They and slipped that one through, I think, the, the studios because they got Chris Evans to star in it. I know, so, and they didn't know. Right, they have Captain <laughs> America headlining this yeah. lower-budget action movie, yes. uh, post-apocalyptic action movie about class war on a train moving in perpetuity. Yeah, right around the Earth, mm -hmm. uh, the only survivors, and naturally the, the, the working class down at the tail of that train is not going to put up with yeah. the shenanigans that the upper class The is poor people to... in the back mount right. the revolution <laughs> to do. get to the front right. of the train. But look at yeah. then there's a film he had called The Host. Yeah. And that's the first one I saw. That's his yeah, first Yeah, right, yeah. Feature. And talk about the virus that could almost be a pandemic now. Yeah. And look at The Host. I mean, look at the figurative properties of that host mm -hmm. and uh, you're talking about Korea and you're talking about a monster coming up out of the river yeah and I I that because some jerky American scientist told his Korean assistant to pour this liquid down the yeah. drain <laughs> classic premise right <laughs> yes. of science and laziness <laughs> yes coming yeah. together yeah uh, yeah and well you know, I remember when that movie came out, it was a lot of fun. It it was obviously he didn't have a big budget. Right. So he's working with this, like, you know, some pretty decent CGI. Yep. But that's, the fun of it is really in just, like, this monster wreaking havoc in the daylight. That's what I really enjoy. <laughs> oh, is it right? Yeah. You know, because so many of these things, you know, they, they try to hide the CGI and, and like, nighttime and fast cutting and yeah. um there was something very old school fun about watching this you know giant monster. well he talks about his early days in and protecting the little camera that he had and getting some buds in in, in school uh making a movie sounds just like spielberg yeah really in a sense but so he had long time interest in film and then gradually working himself up into being what now is maybe the, the premier director in the world. Yeah. If you think about his achievement. Right. So how soon do you think it's going to be before it's probably the, Hollywood is already calling, right? Yes, of course. Do you abandon, if you're Bong Joon-ho, uh, your country of origin, when you've just put its mm, cinema on mm. the global map? I have, I have 
faith that he is a good boy, that he likes he likes his country, he likes what he is doing for his country. I mean, Korea is just very excited about this, the world recognition. Well, you know, I, I sadly have to admit that I'm not as well versed in Korean film as I should be. I have checked some of these movies out, okay. and they, they are so beautiful <laughs> and well made. Even like, I, I watched one called uh, The Devil, oh man, now I'm going to forget it. Oh, whatever. Whatever. It, it's just, I, it, it made me think there's this whole world out there of, of these great movies. And I know we've read about them, we've heard about them, but now it's time to kind of really dig in and uh, check out what this country has to offer. They've been making some of the great films the past 20 years. And think about when Ang Lee came on the scene mm -hmm. with Crouching Tiger yeah. as an Asian director and winning the Oscar. That was maybe the beginning, but he's the only other one that's ever won the Oscar. Yeah. And so I think now we have, in, uh, in Bong, we have the new wave. And, and, and if you've seen him on the circuit, he is one major charmer. Yeah. I mean, he is just <laughs> full of the devil. Uh -huh. You know, we've talked, our last show, we talked about Citizen Kane. Yeah. And we both agreed that, that, uh, <clears throat> that he was being playful, right? And I think Vong is has has, a, has some of Orson Welles in him. Yeah, just really this kind of universal talent, but also with a, a sense of amusement in what he's doing. And certainly, all of his films have that comic right. quality, mm -hmm. even though they're serious subjects. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the demise of the freezing of the Earth, the uh, the the, kind of the virus right. business. Uh, you know, this guy is. Is really, uh, he's not he's not Orson Welles yet, mm -hmm. because I don't think he has a really magnificent Ambersons yet to show us what he can do. And nor is he a Scorsese yet. And we we have this conversation over and over again. <laughs> but the Oscar winning the Oscar, in some ways, I don't know. You know, Scorsese didn't win a Best Directing Oscar. Until the departed. Oh, good, please. And this hurts me. Right, I know. <laughs> it does, and yet, never having won the Oscar, you could make the argument that he made better films. Yeah. In yeah. That, that, those 20 or 30 years. Um, you know, I remember Jonathan Demme. He made these little exciting movies like Married to the Mob and uh, Stop Making Sense. You know, these little low-budget, charming yeah. Kind of movies with a and distinct then voice. And then he made Silence of the Lambs. Oh, right. And then he won Best Director. Yeah. And then yeah. just nothing was the same know, after that. It's not that he didn't make, you know, right out of the gate. Then what did he make? He uh, did that Toni Morrison um, adaptation, Beloved, mm -hmm. with Oprah. You know, screaming, give me another Oscar. Mm -hmm. And it didn't come together. It didn't work. Hmm. And I would argue that a lot of the stuff that he did post Silence of the Lambs, post winning an Oscar, you're always chasing it again. I know. So I hope this guy doesn't lose his his sense of place in the world. Well, you know, I, I, I really like, I, it may have been at Khan. I really liked his comment. It gave me hope that, th that this fellow is truly grounded and may not lose whatever it is because of his win. He said this, he said, if something doesn't go well in the movies, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if something doesn't go well in the course of the day, we go back home and we watch the films of our mentors. Hitchcock, in my case, uh, Claude Chabrol, I watch their interviews as well. That's the kind of thing I do for the time being. Huh. So, so I see himself as tied to certainly a master in Hitchcock, and there's yeah. a bit of Hitchcock you think particularly in Snowpiercer. Oh, yeah, well, and definitely it, Parasite. Parasite, right, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who knows? Bong Joon-ho. Bong Joon-ho. And also, we should say, he's got two other films we didn't talk about. Mother, which I have not seen, I haven't and Akja, which is currently on Netflix. You can see that. Yeah, I know. It. And it's have, currently available. Are you, going to, you haven't seen it? I have not seen it. All right. Well, we have more. Get to get to work, All right. You? We have more Bong to go. <laughs> Take a bomb hit. <laughs>